A good Christian should follow the Bible, or, at the very least, the Ten Commandments written within. But what if your copy of the good book told you to do something rather sinful? The book I speak of has become known to history as the Wicked Bible. Printed in 1631 by London's own royal printer, the very same royal printer responsible for the famous King James Version of the Bible, one of the most important books in history and certainly one which dramatically shaped the English-speaking world we know today. But this story is about the Wicked Bible and how two hilariously embarrassing printing errors led to a vicious downward spiral for royal printer Robert Barker. If you're familiar with the Bible, you might know the commandment, Thou shalt not commit adultery. God's command aside, for the sake of your marriage, that's good advice. But what if you picked up a freshly pressed Bible, authorized by the King of England himself, and turned to your favorite section, the Ten Commandments? But something seems a bit different. Here, God commands that thou shalt commit adultery. You look at your wife, then you look at the wife of your neighbor. You turn back to the good book for guidance. You search for your favorite verse, Deuteronomy 5.24, which usually reads as, Behold, the Lord our God hath shewed us his glory and his greatness. But something is up with this Bible which reads as follows. Behold, the Lord our God hath shewed us his glory and his great ass. Nice. Forgetting a knot is one thing. Actually, history has shown just how common this mistake is. Absent negatives such as this are actually plentiful throughout the many versions of the Bible printed in the past 600 years. And yes, many of them reverse the scriptural meaning to humorous effect. So forgetting a knot is actually understandable. But mixing up God's greatness for God's great backside suggests this may not be an accidental mistake. Unfortunately, these two printing errors had already found their way into a massive amount of Bibles. The two royal printers, Robert Barker and Martin Lucas, quickly found themselves in big trouble. They were called into the Star Chamber for judgment. Their printing license was revoked and they were fined 300 pounds, which is over 50,000 pounds or 63,000 US dollars today in 2020. The majority of affected copies of the Bible were gathered and burned. Only a handful survived, which today have sold online for as high as $100,000. The fate of Robert Barker was not so kind. He was publicly shamed by an outraged King Charles I and Archbishop George Abbott, the latter of which had this to say. I knew the time when great care had about printing, the Bibles especially. Good compositors and the best correctors were gotten, being grave and learned men, the paper and the letter rare, and fair every way of the best. But now the paper is not. The composers, boys, and the correctors, unlearned. Not only had Robert Barker shamed himself, but he had brought shame to his entire generation of printers. Despite all this, a few years later, he tried to start a new printing venture of his own to help pay off the fine. But his lack of business experience and desperation led him even deeper underwater. In 1635, he was thrown into debtor's prison, where he would later die alone in 1643. This same man, Robert Barker, was responsible for the first edition of one of the most printed 
well-known and influential books of all time, the King James Bible, which he paid for the printing costs out of pocket and made almost no money from it as profits went to the king. But for his contribution, King James rewarded him with an exclusive license to print the Bible. And this leads into a growing theory that maybe Barker didn't make those dreaded errors at all. What if it was someone else? Someone who purposefully sabotaged his printing? Barker held an exclusive license to print the Bible, and if he were to lose it, his rival printers would be the next in line. Given this motivation and the fact that, unlike forgetting a word in a sentence, God's great ass is not a typical typographical error, it's totally possible that the Wicked Bible was no accident and Robert Barker was set up. What do you think of this theory? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this short dive into the Wicked Bible and want more crazy stories from the past, subscribe and give this video a like. I'll see you in the next episode.